Oh my god. Oh my god. It, it looks so good. It looks so good. But unfortunately, it doesn't come out for another uh, however many days that is. And the little hamster on a wheel where my heart should be just can't take it. So I'm going to play the next best thing. Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi 2. Budokai Tenkaichi 2 came out way back in the ancient year of 2006. Now, I was pretty young then, but I remember it being one of the first games I got really into. I still have the same copy from back then, the uh, super rare limited release <clears throat> Forgot to Return to Blockbuster edition. It's probably the most valuable thing in my collection. Not to say my copies of Shrek Super Slam and the Meet the Robinsons game aren't valuable, but... Y y you know, there are hierarchies to this stuff. Let me preface this whole thing. I'm not a fighting game guy. I'm terrible at fighting games. Just ask any of my friends who actually play them. I'm just not good at traditional fighting games. Fortunately for me, Tenkaichi 2 isn't traditional at all. It's an unbalanced frenetic mess, and man, do I love it. There's a ridiculous 129 characters in the roster, 135 in the Wii version, and in true Dragon Ball game fashion, 20 of those characters are some variant of Goku or Vegeta. The rest are an impressive mix of characters from the original show, Z, GT, and even the movies. Except for Bio Broly, but that's okay. We forgot about him anyway. All your favorites are here, like my personal favorite, the drink. What? They just call me the drink. What? They even included his father, the cup. Vegeta's the cup, the cup, the cup, because he is my father. father. My son is the drink. drink, drink. I am the cup. This game having so many characters means the balancing is less like a tier list and more like a scatter shot. That means we get such awesome matchups as Planet Destroying Demon versus a child, Old Man versus the legendary Giga Nigga 9000 himself. Broly. One thing I really like about this game is the ability to read these little bios for every character that detail their roles in the show and movies. You can even see who voiced each character, and I'm pretty sure they got just about everyone to reprise their role. As an aside, shout out to Damian Clark. He voices all three forms of Cell, who all sound wildly different. But I'm afraid that with only one arm, you won't be able to hold me off much longer. Oh, it's you, Vegeta. My name, good people, is Seth. And whether or not you're aware, you are familiar with me. He also voiced Scar in Full Metal Alchemist. Name? My name? Fuck you. And Handsome Jack in Borderlands, which I recently found out he ad-libbed the funniest lines for. So, shout out Damien Clark, who in this game is credited as <laughs> D'Artagnan Dar Nickelback? Tenkaichi 2 has one of the most comprehensive story modes of any Dragon Ball game. You can have all sorts of adventures flying around Earth in space. Starting with the Saiyan Saga, it covers the entirety of Dragon Ball Z, most of GT, the Trunks and Bardock specials, and most of the movies. I distinctly remember the first time I ever played this game and started the story mode, only to get absolutely mollywopped by Raditz. Imagine my surprise when I passed the fight anyway. Turns out, I'm not trash. You're supposed to lose that fight. There's a couple of these unwinnable fights throughout the story mode, and if you manage to actually beat them, you're awarded with some bonus what-if story levels. Beat Raditz with Piccolo, and you get Fateful Brothers, a scenario where Raditz loses his memory in the fight with Piccolo, and is found and trained by Goku. Beat Dodoria with Gohan, and you get Beautiful Treachery, a Zarbon story where he tries to get the Dragon Balls and immediately dies. Finally, beat Gohan as Goten, and you get Destined Rivals, a version of the Boo Saga where Goku and Vegeta finally get to have their rematch and Boo is killed off early. Good stuff. Hypothetical scenarios are a staple of the Dragon Ball series, and I'm happy to see Sparking Zero bringing them back, even if I already know what to expect from the user-created ones. Holy God, what are you showing me? His head. Come on! Open your eyes! Earlier I mentioned this game being an unbalanced mess, right? Well, it, it is. But there's a method to the madness. The Tenkaichi games have a really unique flow that I can't quite put into words. Every character has a set of special attacks and a varying series of combos they can pull off. These combos can be a little daunting and the timing windows aren't the most generous at times, but with enough practice eventually it clicks and suddenly you realize, this is arena fighter perfection. Obviously some characters are better than others. But 
but you can make even the worst of the worst better by equipping items to them that increase their stats or give them additional abilities, so every character can be top tier in the hands of a capable player. Here's Yajirobe sweeping the Ginyu Force on hardest difficulty. Yajirobe isn't a particularly noteworthy character outside of his Sensu ability, which fully restores his health but takes a long time to execute. With items such as Perfect Guard, which lets his guards block all damage even from blast attacks, or some stat boosters that massively increase his base health, it's possible to turn Yajirobe from a bottom tier joke character to theoretically unbeatable as long as you can keep using Sensu. This of course means you can make the already powerful characters even better, so there is still a hierarchy. To show my example, I'll need a volunteer. Hey man, come get the second controller, I gotta beat your ass real quick. Oh, fuck you, dude. Okay, I'm going to pick one custom character, and he's going to pick five regular characters. And, and we're just gonna see what happens. <laughs> what the fuck is this damage? What was that? That's my socks. Oh, he's got to go big mode to stay on the trains. Come on, Fuck go off. big mode. Go big mode. Do it. No, I want the cool blue hair. No, no, no. Go big mode. And let me show you how it still doesn't mean anything. What? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think he used too much power? Fuck off. Most items in the game can be equipped on characters, but other items are rewards for beating story levels and are combined to create unlockable hidden characters. This is how you get most of the villains in the roster, which means to unlock every character you have to hear King Kai scream the word fusion a bare minimum of 50 times. It's burned into my brain. Oh yeah, it's fusion! Get out of the Let's talk about music. The Dragon Ball game soundtracks are a little infamous for occasionally being a little unoriginal. But Tenkaichi 2 almost feels like an apology for that. It's so good, this time an artist copied it instead of the other way around. Most of the menu songs are slow and relaxing, while the battle music ranges from drum and bass to what might be Slipknot. Each menu has a different character and background song, which makes the songs feel like they were almost written to be that character's theme. It's more thought out than you might expect from an anime arena fighter from 2006, but Dragon Ball games have always been about the little details. One of my favorites is the unique character dialogue before matches. Most of the time, characters will say one of a short list of lines, but they'll say something unique in specific matchups. Bardock vs. Vegeta becomes class warfare. What does a low-class warrior like you want with me? <laughs> Business with you? Don't make me laugh. 18 vs. Zanya turns into Jerry Springer. You man's kinda cute. Skank. It's great. A lot of these matchups won't happen anywhere in the story mode, so the only way to hear the dialogue is to set the matches up yourself, and with so many characters, I'm willing to bet there's still dialogue I haven't found. Finally thought of the best way to describe how this game plays. It's like Tony Hawk. No, really, attacks and guards are directional, meaning you can hit upwards, downwards, to the left, to the right, and straight forward. With the right timing, this lets you chain together gut punches, leg sweeps, and dashes all into one combo. It's like maintaining your balance on a rail with your character as the center of gravity. This is now a review of Tony Hawk's Underground 2. Got my custom character here, 44-year-old Mingi from the Bronx. Oh, that's a sick grind. There's a pretty popular consensus that Tenkaichi 2 has one of the best, if not the best, story mode of any Dragon Ball game. I agree, but it'd be wrong for me to not talk at least a little bit about the other game modes. Alright! I'll give it my all in this ranking challenge! 
This is a challenge mode that has you take on gauntlets of increasingly difficult enemies for item rewards. Each gauntlet has a theme such as giant characters, tag teams, and movie bosses. After each match, Korn gives you a grade and points based on things like the length of the combos you hit and how much health you had by the end. I've been playing this game for like 15 years and I still can't get a perfect score, you uptight bastard. Well, that'll be fine. You can fight in a tournament and earn money. Another challenge mode that has you fight through a bracket of randomly selected characters with the stages depending on which tournament you pick. You get money for winning, but you can also play it with up to seven other people. Neat. Now it's time to test our strength. Fight your hardest in the challenge. Trunks makes you fight either bots or your friends. The drink demands sacrifice. You can set up custom matches as 1v1s, tag matches, or free battles where you can select up to five characters to use. Well, until Sparking Zero comes out, I think that's it. I've set an alarm for the 10th, and now I'm going to sleep until then. Be sure to catch me at EVO this year. I couldn't afford the actual ticket, so I'm sitting outside the venue with a CRT. It's basically the same experience. Join the Picture Panic Discord server for video and stream updates and general silliness. Leave a like and consider subscribing for more videos that might be like this. Don't do either of those things if you hated this video and want me to die. Thanks for watching.